Yeah, well, thank you. Um, uh, and first of all, I want to say that this is the debate. When we sit down in a few minutes, you'll hear uh, sort of a consensus approach. And everything I say here about surgeons does not apply to my uh, good friend Fezzo, who is uh, truly a brilliant surgeon. Um, and colleague, and when I have patients at Sinai who want an outside opinion, I'm sending them to the Cleveland uh, Clinic for his expertise. So I'm going to speak about Crohn's colitis patients should never be offered an ileoanal pouch. And we actually don't choose our position, they hand it to us. Um, and I'm often handed a position which is harder to uh, defend than others. Uh, last year's debate, for instance, I was given a case where there was a 22-year-old severe ulcerative colitis failing five days of IV steroids, and the other position from the other uh, debate was in uh, debate participant, inflicts about five mix per kg and subtotal colectomy if no improvement within five days. My point that I was uh, assigned, same case, patient's not getting better after five days, give the patient a bedside commode, start a kosher diet. <laughs> so it's sometimes hard to uh, define. Now, for our surgical colleagues uh, in the audience, I have to sort of uh, make it a little simpler to make it fair for our <laughs> surgeon friends, I'll try to speak slowly and with only one or two syllables per word, okay? So maybe they'll have a chance. Now, I'm going to do something. I think if there are surgeons here, it's probably a good time to get some coffee uh, because I'm going to do something you probably have never heard at a meeting, which is present data. So we're going to talk about problems with pouches in patients with Crohn's disease. We'll talk about problems of symptoms, problems of local complications, problems of major complications, and a pr problem of pouch failure and excision. So symptoms. So. I always tell my fellows, if you're going to make a slide, and you start by saying, well, I know this is a busy slide, but then you shouldn't be using that slide. But I deliberately are using busy slides to show you how many complications there are in patients who have Crohn's disease with pouches. And this is so small that I could barely see that the major complications of obstructive symptoms, the hazard rate is about 10 for patients with Crohn's disease pouches. You could probably see better up there. No. In terms of obstructive symptoms, the hazard ratio is about, in terms of endoscopic findings um, in Crohn's disease patients, significant in terms of fistula, uh, obstruction, and stricture. So these are uh, major findings, not infrequent. In terms of something that could actually read, increased symptoms in patients with pre-op perianal disease. If you're looking at daytime continence on the right, you see 66%. Well, that's wonderful. How about the other 34% who have daytime incontinence? Nocturnal continence, 50%. Sounds like a pretty good number. 50% can't. You have young, single men and women. They're going out on dates. They want to spend the night with uh, someone they've met, and they have to explain that they've had surgery and that they have a problem with continence. This is a big, big problem. Problem of local complications. Well, now I'm going to show you some uh, cases. Um, actually, these couple of cases were uh, so bad that the patient wanted a second opinion after having surgery in New York City that I sent them to uh, Feza. This is a patient. Uh, what you're looking at is a tiny little hole. That's where the afferent limb comes into the pouch. Sometimes it's so bad you can't even tell where uh, the pouch is, where the pouch is, but where the where the opening is, and with a lot of poking around with the balloon for quite some time, it actually was right here. So these are big, big problems for our patients who have Crohn's disease. Uh, Bo Shen at Cleveland Clinic has shown us in one of his many publications, if you ever want to, for the fellows here, ever need to make a presentation on pouches, just go to Medline and write in Shen B, and you'll come up with everything you need to know. So this is pouches in uh, Crohn's disease with uh, fistulas, and as you can see here, these fistulas have a lot of places to go. Unfortunately, one of these places is the vagina, uh, which result in cetons, and obviously this is a devastating complication for uh, women, young and old. 
perianal complications in patients with preop complications. We were talking about a localized, quote unquote, relatively minor complications, perianal abscesses. Uh, this is in a group of 65 patients. Ten of them needed surgery for an anal abscess. And unfortunately, you see three of these 65 patients, not a, a trivial number, had significant rectal vaginal fistulas. And uh, in this case, as with uh, patients with Crohn's disease without uh, pouches, you really need to ask the patient. Often they'll be so embarrassed they don't want to bring it up uh, at your visit. How often does this happen? And what's the time course? Well, you could see here the fistula-free survival. This was a study that looked at uh, patients with indeterminate colitis of a UC variety versus all those patients who had even indeterminate colitis that looked like Crohn's, as well as Crohn's disease. You see that there's a real divergence in terms of uh, fistula-free survival, and that by 10 years, only about 20% of patients with Crohn's disease or even pre-op indeterminate Crohn's disease um, only 20% was still uh, fit free of fistula. Now, we went from local complications. Let's talk about the really big major complications. Meta-analysis, so we're not restricting it to one expert center, but actually a series of centers, because if we look at the meta-analysis of Crohn's disease, where we look at the highest quality series, series, here again, you'll see in terms of the big complications, pouch-related fistula, the hazard ratio is five times as likely when it's Crohn's disease versus non-Crohn's disease, and in terms of severe pouch uh, problems that result in pouch failure and pouch excision in a, after a patient has undergone the travails of terrible inflammatory bowel disease uh, pre-op, and then two or three operations, uh, they will still need, with a hazard ratio of nine, uh, will need surgery to remove that pouch and end up with a permanent early ostomy. If you look at the most recent series, you always say those are old data. We've been doing pouches for 40 years. Well, let's look at pouches in the most recent decade. Again, hazard ratio, six times more likely to have a pouch excision if you have Crohn's rather than UC, uh, and ileal pouch, excuse me, that's for uh, pouch-related fistula, and in terms of pouch-related failure, again, eight times more likely to have a pouch excision. This is not a trivial event in the patient's life. Meta-analysis of Crohn's disease pouch outcomes, you look at the very most experienced pouch surgeons, and now uh, more and more surgeons are saying, well, I didn't train in colorectal, I could do a pouch, or even seeing uh, colorectal surgeons who say, well, I'm a colorectal surgeon, but I didn't train with uh, hundreds of pouches. But let's look just at the most experienced surgeons. Again, pouch-related fistula, you're six times more likely to need uh, a treatment for a pouch-related fistula. And again, these are the expert surgeons. And Crohn's disease versus non-Crohn's disease in terms of ileal pouch failure, 12 times more likely to have pouch failure, even with the best of surgeons. Lastly, we'll talk about the problem of pouch failure and excision specifically. Uh, this is one series, pouch failure and excision. When you look at it in ulcerative colitis, about 5%, 45% in this series, 45%. And when does it happen? Well, it starts to diverge between two and a half and five years. And again, at, in this series, uh, by 10 years, about half of patients have lost their pouch. So you can't look at a couple individual uh, case reports and series. We're looking at large series here. And then one of the largest, uh, most experienced centers, uh, as you've just heard, and this is from Dr. Fazio's, Dr. Remzi's uh, mentor and really the, the, one of the world's uh, experts and pioneers in this surgery, uh, risk factors for pouch failure. If you have Crohn's disease, the hazard ratio is about four and a half times more likely. And even if you don't, even if you don't need a pouch resection, uh, fistula, rectal vaginal fistula, again, uh, or pouch vaginal fistula, again, devastating to the patient, about seven times more likely if you have Crohn's rather than the pre-op diagnosis for UC. So my conclusions in terms of planned ileoanal pouches for Crohn's disease, preoperative diagnosis of Crohn's disease increases postoperative complications. We saw with pouch fistula, we saw with pelvic sepsis, and we see with pouch failure. Multivariate analysis in various series that controlled for other variables likewise predict that pre-op diagnosis uh, of Crohn's disease is an important predictor of uh, increased pouch failure rate. And lastly, we see this increased incidence of poor outcome in patients with pre-op Crohn's disease are even more common even in the most experienced of surgical hands. Thank you very much.